So, Army. All right. Okay, so benefits. One great thing about more people coming out as ex-Muslims is that it shows that we don't have to hope for a reformed version of Islam. It is more than possible for people to leave Islam. Are we here to fight for the truth or pick and choose from lies one we consider less harmful to us? We are normalizing fighting Islam as we fight all religions, as we fight all dogma, as we fight all superstition. Instead of denying Muslims an alternative to superstitious beliefs, and instead of replacing one form of delusion with another that might be less harmful to us, but leaves Muslims as victims of their own dogma. A reformed version of Islam still involves believing in things without evidence. That is the source of our problems. If we don't fight believing in harmless nonsense without evidence, we are also allowing believing in harmful nonsense without evidence. Promoting Islamic reform is promoting Islam. We don't want to be involved with any promotion of Islam. We want to fight Islam. Islam as a whole doesn't make sense. So why would we support nonsense? If an idea makes no sense, you call it out as nonsense, whether it's harming you personally or not. Our presence here as ex-Muslims is demonstrating to the world that leaving Islam is not just possible, but it's more common than you might think. So that was the benefits. Costs. So yesterday here, they gave out balloons with the names of victims of Islams on each. The one I got was Hossein Sudman from Iran, who was executed for leaving Islam. I'm from Iran, and I became an atheist before leaving Iran. So I thought to myself, that could have been me. I later started Atheist Republic. I wrote a book called Why There Is No God, and I started an ex-Muslim podcast called Secular Jihadists from the Middle East, which you all should check out, by the way, if you like podcasts. <laughs> We, we only recently got started, and we have had more than 100,000 downloads, and many of them is from Egypt, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia. The point is, I'm very much open and out about my atheism, and I'm sure I, I'll get hanged if I go back to Iran. So when my mom got cancer, I couldn't go see her in Tehran. But she didn't want to die without seeing her son. Against doctor's advice, she left the hospital and came to Vancouver, where I live. She had stage, st stage three pancreatic cancer, and she wasn't supposed to leave the hospital. She died soon after coming to Vancouver. So I guess I consider my openness of my atheism responsible for having, having done that to her. So, does it that way? Does the benefits outweigh the cost? Whether the benefits outweigh the cost for being open about atheism or being open about your ex-Muslim depends on the ex-Muslim and the environment she's in. It also depends on each person's tolerance for risk and tolerance for negative reactions that they'll get. But to ex-Muslims out there who are considering being, being open, I ask you to consider that whatever difficulties you face, your openness will help normalize and reduce those difficulties for ex-Muslims coming after you. <laughs>